All right, cool, perfect. All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first regional uh, programs. Let's talk session for this ASHRAE year. So our first topic is actually going to be on certification. So just before we start, we have a couple of house rules that we'll go through. Um, all attendees sí, Esteban, te escucho. will be uh, have their mics muted. There will be two question and answer segments in this session. You are welcome to turn your video on. This is the uh, agenda for the program. Just a couple things about Zoom. All right, so Zoom control panel. So we have the mute, sub video if you are video sharing, as well as you can react. There's a chat option, as well as the participants who are here in session with you. For those of you who would like to tune in to this session, which is presented in Portuguese and Spanish, there's the option at the bottom in the control bar to click on interpretation and select the language that you are listening to to hear in your language of choice. Um, please select so at the bottom of the screen in the interpretation option, and you can do so now. Um, we would like to thank Mr. Esteban Bancini and Walter Lenzi and Fernando Dutra, who will be assisting in translation for this session. So welcome to Region 12 presents Ashnery Personal Certification, Validation, Recognition, and Competitive Advance. We must say thanks to our guest speakers as well, Mr. Esteban Bencini, who is one of our Ashnery certified uh, members from Region 12, Ms. Kimberly Coleman, who is also an uh, Ashnery certified member, and she sits on the Ashnery Certification Committee, Mr. Fernando Dutra del Castillo, who is our newest certified member for Region 12, uh, Mr. Tim Fine from ASHRAE headquarters, who is our certification manager, Mr. Walter Lenzi, who is also one of our ASHRAE certified members, and Ms. Susan Polite, who is also working at ASHRAE headquarters uh, with, along with... Uh, so just a little bit about our uh, guest speakers tonight. Mr. Esteban Bacini is a mechanical engineer. He's an ASHRAE EEAP certified and ASHRAE OPMP certified uh, member. He has 15 years experience in HVAC and chiller projects, eight years in carrier big projects and corporate customers. He is the ASHRAE Argentina past president, a BEQ member for 2017 to 2020 and the MP RBC for Region 12. Uh, we have also joining us tonight, Ms. Uh, Tim Kim Coleman, who is a National Director of Engineering. She is a professional engineer, lead associate professional, as well as she has her HFPDP certification. You guys would find out further about this acronym. It's very, very long. Uh, she's the leading Leads engineer across Leo A. Daily. She is based in a firm in Omaha Studio with 18 years experience of design. She has led design and precision mechanical infrastructure for large healthcare complexes and hospitals. And she has also led interdisciplinary design teams for a variety of project, project types. Kim has authored articles in the medical construction and design and healthcare magazines. Her expertise has appeared in Forbes and engineering news records, among others. Kim serves on the ASHRAE certification committee as vice chair and is a certified well, healthcare facility design professional and lectures rec regularly at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. As ASHRAE certification support coordinator, career development, Ms. Susan Polite is instrumental in ensuring energy efficiency, sorry, certification operations in evaluating certification and recertification applications, in conducting audits and in helping to ensure that ASHRAE adheres to its rigorous ANSI slash ISO accreditation standards. Um, Mr. Fernando Dutra is one of our new newest certified HVAC designers with five years experience as an HVAC designer who is also based in South Brazil. 
And last but not least, Mr. Tim Klein has been the ASHRAE certification manager Ui, since 2013. He works closely with the ASHRAE certification committee, which is responsible for ANSI accreditation, exam development, new program development, and operations. I would like to thank all of our guest speakers tonight for this presentation and for agreeing to, to assist us as well as to share information, the information tonight. Um, Tim, a first to you. Next slide, please. So I'd like to thank uh, Region 12 for allowing the ASHRAE certification committee to speak to its seven certification programs. Uh, we're really excited to be here. We have seven certification programs in seven key built environment jobs. The first one is the Building Commissioning Professional, the BCXP. The next is the Building Energy Assessment Professional, the BEAP. After that, the Building Energy Modeling Professional, the BEMP. The Certified HVAC Designer, the CHD certification. Then the HBDP, the High Performance Building Design Professional. Then the HFDP, the Healthcare Facility Design Professional. And then last is the Building, op <laughs> building Operations <laughs> and Performance Management Professional, the OPMP certification. <laughs> And what you see here on the screen are seven certification digital badges. And we'll talk more about the digital badges. Um, they're an effort by the certification committee to help ASHRAE certified professionals get the recognition they've earned. Next slide, please. So just some background on our certification programs. Then 2007, when ASHRAE started its certification programs, we've certified over 3,400 built environment professionals. Uh, these programs were created to meet industry needs as identified by market research. Um, all seven of our certification programs, we're proud to say are ANSI accredited. ASHRAE has a great reputation in the industry, but having a third party accreditation guarantees a high quality certification program. And each of our seven certifications are headed um, by certification exam subcommittees of subject matter experts. Um, yes. Next slide, please. So the Certified HVAC Designer is our newest certification program. We're really, really um, proud and excited of this program. Um, this program began with a proposal from a member. So if anybody has a great idea for a certification program in the built environment, we accept proposals, but those proposals go through some uh, evaluation and part of that is conducting a job task analysis. So we did that for this uh, proposal. We surveyed over 20,000 ASHRAE consulting engineers, architectural engineers, design build members, and we received over 1,400 respondents from over 50 countries. And what was remarkable about this analysis is that the alignment of critical job tasks was perfectly aligned across the United States and all other of the countries that took part. So we really feel like this is a global certification. And we actually have somebody on the panel who just recently took the exam for Fernando and he can speak to that as well. Good evening guys. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so I can say one of the greater things about the certification is that you will be tested on all the essential skills that are important, not just for your work as an HVC designer, 
but also for your understanding of all the main concepts involved in the process of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, what I meant by that is that when you are preparing to take your test, you're also reinforcing your knowledge, uh, foundations, and even being more self-aware of your strengths and weaknesses on this field. Uh, about my personal experience, when I was studying for my exam in October, I started to notice that I had a gap in my understanding of heating systems, especially heating systems working with steam production, like high pressure steam boilers. And one of the things that contributed to such gap is the fact that here in Brazil, we're not used to designing heating plants in commercial buildings as in other countries because of our weather conditions. So I started to focus on heating systems and other applications. I studied the actual fundamentals, system and equipment, and the applications chapters about heating systems. And I started to pra practice using the exercises from the book, Principles of Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning, the eighth edition to be more precise. And by the way, all the, those books that I talk about were listed in the candidate guidebook uh, that I think Susan will be mentioning later on this presentation. Uh, now I am confident to say that I have a deeper understanding of heating systems because all of the certification knowledge requirements that I needed to, to pass the examination. Great, thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, so part of uh, evaluating a proposal for a new certification program is conducting an industry need survey, which we did as well. So we surveyed that same group of design build professionals, um, consulting engineers, architectural engineers, and we received some very, very interesting survey data among individuals who work closely with HVAC designers, they reported that the level of competence varied greatly. So that told us that there was a, a need for a new certification program. Among respondents who um, are responsible or take part in the hiring of HVAC designers, they reported that there is a need for qualified HVAC designers at their company. And they said that an HVAC designer certification would be a worthwhile professional development goal. So this survey helped the certification committee understand that there was a need and a demand for this certification. And um, Kim Kalman will speak to the next slide. Next slide, please. Sure. Um, so really, um, you know, some of the other information we gathered in terms of, you know, what is the value um, to certain certifications um, to to employers? So, um, you know, as an employer, um, as someone who is, you know, kind of recruiting or looking at, at hiring individuals, there really is value to candidates that have um, certifications in terms of, you know, understanding um, kind of their knowledge base. Um, you know, during kind of even initial interviewing processing, but it's also a great um, method to establish professional development plans for your engineering staff. And it's something we use and target for a lot of our engineering staff, um, especially the HVAC designer uh, certification. It, it's a good, um, it's a good goal to identify for that continual um, growth um, at our, at our firm, as well as just professional, professional growth. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, the, um, you know, Asher has been very strategic in terms of these certifications and making sure that um, these certifications meet the eligibility requirements of certain state, local, and, and federal contracts that will actually, as part of those federal contracts, require if that these certifications are required. Um, so there's a business development opportunity and um, kind of winning work component and value to these certifications as well, especially when pursuing projects that identify um, identify these certifications as a requirement to complete complete the um, the work. So a lot of value provided to employers um, for the ASHRAE certifications. 
Thank you. Next slide. Um, so, and again, then just value of certification to earners. So like my, myself, um, I hold the um, healthcare facility design professional um, certification. And, you know, uh, you know, to me, I find it as a differentiator for healthcare design there. Um, you know, healthcare design has definitely some nuances to it that it's important to sell, set yourself apart as an engineer who does um, healthcare design and, and HVAC and mechanical system design for healthcare facilities um, and really communicating to clients that you have that knowledge and expertise. Um, and that certification is one way to communicate that and differentiate yourself from um, other engineers or competitors kind of in the industry. Um, and I'll let can Fernando speak to maybe some of um, his, his value to the certification as well. Perfect. Uh, I think I belong with the 94% that are proud to hold the ASHRAE certification. And I think too, I'm, I'm on the 89% who believes that it validates their level of specialized knowledge and ability. But also for me, uh, the main values of ASHRAE certifications is that ASHRAE is a global organization and one of the finest in the HVAC industry. And if you are looking for some kind of international validation of your knowledge, I am sure that you will not find a better one to do it. Um, Esteban, did you want to say a few words too? We can. Esteban is translating, so maybe we should yes. go to the next slide. So I think I think I can go with with this one about digital badging. Uh, so maybe I will share with you my screen. Let me just. But first, uh, just to talk a little bit about digital badging. So after you pass the examination, you receive an, e an email and I got mine, I think two weeks of my examination from a claim. Uh, a claim is a, is a, uh, is a, it's a badging platform that works with ASHRAE and other organizations. And it is to recognize, manage and share professional achievements. And in this email, it is informed that you have earned a badge from ASHRAE and that you need to claim your digital badge. And to claim your badge, you need to create an account in the claim website. And after that, <laughs> you'll be able to share your badge by your email, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, and you can use in your LinkedIn account too. Let me share with you my screen. Just a minute. Everybody can see my screen. Okay, this is my this is my acclaim account, and you can see this is the HVC designer digital badge, and here you can see all the information about the the certification. So all the skills that this certification validates, and you can even go to additional details, and you go to the web page of Afri explaining about the CHD, what are the eligibility, all the things that you need to prepare for the, to try the certification. Here on my LinkedIn account, you can see that you can put the information about the, the your digital badge in like a share, like a sharing post, or you can, uh, you can, let me, let me just find it. It is right, right here. And you can put in your 
personal profile too. So if I click right here, I came back in the same uh, acclaim web page with all the information about your uh, certification. Let me just stop sharing. And, and so to sum up, uh, there are a lot of cool, of cool things you can do with your digital badge, but also don't forget you can always download as a PDF file and print your certification in case you have a meeting in person. So in your Acclaim account, you can also download a PDF version of your di digital badge. So it is a, a good resource to know. And if you want more information about ASHRAE certifications badges, you can access the dedicated page about it in the ASHRAE website. I think we can go to the next slide. Yeah, I, I was talking about that. The, we have the, all these resources about shareable in electronic media. Uh, is, is an instant recognition? Perfect. Next slide. And I think we're open to questions, right? That's right. This is part one of our presentation. <laughs> we have another part after this about how to apply and take an exam. But right now we've got a question, question slide for questions. Uh, Fernando, uh, in the chat, there is a question uh, that talks about the uh, HVAC uh, designer certification um, and if it's multinational, uh, as well as if there can be languages in Spanish, perhaps Tim can answer. But Fernando, would you uh, look at the uh, chat for the questions there? Because they're mul it's a multifaceted question, a multi-part question. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm looking right here. Uh, he's asking about that if in, in multinational companies, if it's, it is needed to that the HVC uh, design uh, plans uh, if it if it is needed, if it's required that uh, only for FRA certification certificate members. And about the cost of the certification. Okay, so we're going to talk about cost in the next part of the presentation. Um, we don't encourage employers to require certification, just to consider using certification as a tool to identify talented uh, prospects as a professional development tool for current employees. I'm not sure if that answers the question. And Fernando, could you speak to perhaps maybe the uh, ability of the HVAC certified designer to maybe practice in different countries besides the one that they reside in? Obviously, there's going to be different languages, maybe different codes, but do you have experience or have some insight as to how this certification may be able to help you design across different climate zones? Perfect. Uh, I think that uh, as Tim said in the beginning of the presentation, the CHD certification it was, uh, was conceived to, to not, not just for one country and it, it is it's like an international certification and you and you'll be able to apply your knowledge uh, in, in all 
I think on all, all the countries that actually uh, have a, have this kind of um, how can I say I think if I can say more about that that uh, you will be able to to work uh, abroad in other countries with your certification i think you will validate all the the main um, the, the main abilities and skills that you need to work as an hvc designer in any country that's very good to know and so one thing that we wanted to let people know about, and we will talk about this later, but be, for those attending and for Region 12 members, there's a discount that's associated with the uh, certification for all certifications. So we encourage everyone to stay on the channel and on the webinar to learn more about this discount exclusively for uh, Region 12 members. We have more questions for Tim and uh, for Fernando. So Tim, this may be your question. For the CHD, is it a taught program or self-study and what tools or information are provided to assist? And I believe, Fernando, you mentioned the candidate handbook provided resources for one to study for the exam, correct? Yes. So uh, a job is a very complicated um, activity so we don't believe that it can be taught in a program or a course it's really a combination of education work experience um, we have a study guide now for the chd it's very new and it's a great tool to help hvac designers figure out where their gaps are and how to study to teach to those gaps so we'll talk more about that for sure um, if ASHRAE has a lot of online on-demand resources. So if you have a gap in something, we probably have a course on that and you could take that course, certainly. Now, also there's a question if there is a test uh, question bank, if that exists for practicing, for purchasing. A great question. We have a 30 question practice exam that's online but there's also a 100 question practice exam in this new study guide. And the prerequisites for certification, where would one find them, Tim? So those are in each of the Canada guidebooks for each of the certification programs. And I believe, I'm not sure if we're going to show those, we can, but I believe it's page two of the Canada guidebooks. And anyone can get a candidate guidebook for free, correct? That's right. Later in the presentation, we're going to go to the ASHRAE website, navigate around and show everybody where they can find that. Okay. I'm looking in the chat. I do not see any other questions. We have one more, John, about okay. if, if this certification, if you need to renew over something that is for life. Ah. <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. Um, all of our certification programs, so the concept of renewal is to demonstrate continuing competence. Um, everybody knows that their jobs are changing, they're evolving, There's, there are new competencies, competencies change. So the recertification requirement is the requirement for professional development hours. Those can be earned through coursework, uh, teaching, publishing art, articles, completing projects. So there are lots of different ways to earn professional development. Um, for the CHD, it's 30 hours over three years, and half of those can be earned from completing projects. I think we have one more question here about uh, if the certification uh, you have some recognition uh, in, for example, in your government. 
if you have if you have a certain yeah if you have uh, some kind of recognition by the government for each country so the united states has the most jurisdictions that recognize different certifications uh, some in canada um, i think some in europe as well so it really just depends on the country um, i think the main benefit of certification is to the person who holds <laughs> it um, you have it it's yours you take it with you if you change jobs um, and it's your it's your uh, it just represents your validated job competencies Okay, I think we have one more question here, but it's for Esteban. Uh, if he has some experience with the Proctor remote exam, but I think he already uh, answered it. And we'll talk about that later, yes. Right. Tim, can we go ahead to the next uh, slide? Can Those are great questions. I think we should because we've got more slides and there will probably be more questions. So Definitely. And these questions will definitely be answered in the future slides as well. Susan and Tim, over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, for the next few uh, slides, we'll familiarize you with um, the process to become certified, and as well as um, a brief overview of the renewal process um, once you are certified. Um, the first step that we encourage you to take um, to become certified is to review um, the candidate guidebook. Um, and this is an excellent resource and, and one of our key resources um, for you to become familiar with the eligibility requirements of the certification of your choice. Um, the candidate guidebook also um, outlines examination details so you can find um, information about completing your application, um, scheduling, scoring, um, and what to expect on the day of your exam. So all those are there um, as well for you to understand um, about certification. Um, also, um, there's the recertification requirements um, that are outlined in the candidate guidebook as well. Next slide, please. Um, the candidate guidebook um, can be uh, a resource for you um, as far as what to study. Um, and of course, uh, you want to know um, the eligibility requirements. Um, one formula you can remember as far as uh, applying for certification is that education um, plus uh, work experience equals sitting for the exam. So when you look into the candidate guidebook um, and our other resources, you'll be able to find um, you know, what it takes as far as your education, your work experience that will make you eligible. Um, here we have a picture of the uh, appendix, the detailed content outline. So um, this is a great um, place in the candidate guidebook for you to look. Um, it outlines um, the different job tasks um, and topics that are covered on, the, in the, on your certification exam um, so that you could see um, how your work experience and um, experience and education match up um, with what's going to be featured on the exam. Because um, the exams are based on job tasks. So um, again, the detailed content outline of your candidate guidebook is a great place to start as far as uh, knowing whether you're eligible and what's going to be featured on your exam. Next slide, please. Um, and then, of course, the next step, once you determine your eligibility, is to submit an application. Um, the applications are online, and um, they take um, as little as five minutes to complete. Um, however, 
um, if you are um, applying for the BEAP or the BCXP, you may want to allot a little bit more time um, to complete those particular applications. Um, those can take um, as much as 15 minutes or more uh, to complete, uh, depending on what you have to do to fill out those applications. So you may want to take a little bit more time for the BEAP and the BCXP. But again, they're brief applications and can be um, easily completed. Um, once you submit your application online, um, you can expect about um, communication regarding your application within seven days, business days. Next slide, please. Um, and of course, we had some questions earlier regarding the application fees. Um, so uh, there you would uh, can find this also in the candidate guidebook as well as on our website. Um, here we have outlined um, that to apply as an ASHRAE member, um, it's $395 for uh, an ASHRAE member to apply uh, for certification and $595 for a non-member. So if you're a member, um, that can break down to about $133 um, per year uh, because a certification lasts for three years. So um, that's a great value for um, your certification. Um, and then of course the renewal uh, is $195 um, for ASHRAE members and then $295 for non-members. The next step would be to um, schedule your exam. Um, so once uh, you've submitted your online application, it's been approved and uh, your information has been processed um, with our testing provider, then you'll receive um, instructions on how to schedule your exam. Um, you can schedule your exam um, with, uh, of course, at one of our uh, 375 locations um, for computer-based testing all over the world. Um, we also have, as mentioned, our, our new remote online proctored exams. Uh, and this is proving to be a great option for those who are uh, located internationally, maybe uh, testing <coughs> are really prevalent um, in their country, or um, of course, it's also a good option to, uh, to help mitigate some of our health and safety concerns that we're dealing with right now. So, um, you know, this is proving to be a really popular option to take the online remote proctored exams. Um, and of course, one other perk um, for when you schedule an exam is you're a non-native English speaker, um, you can receive an additional 30 minutes um, of uh, testing time as well. Um, and Suzanne, I know on, and I know there's some who uh, wanted to participate. Um, as far as the remote proctored exam, um, I would encourage you to uh, look at our website as well, um, because this um, features instructions on um, to help you prepare if you choose this particular option. It helps you to prepare for taking a remote proctored exam because it would be a little bit different than going to a testing center. Um, you can learn about on our website about system compatibility, um, test, the testing environment, what to expect, um, the exam check-in process. So um, those are things to, to get familiar with um, if you choose the remote proctored exam option. Um, and some of our panel, I wanted to uh, pause and yeah. these other comments. Yeah, thanks, Suzanne. So, um, you know, the, the remote proctored exam, it's something as uh, serving on the certifications committee here for the past few years, um, something we were very excited to roll out. And there was quite a bit of discussion and investigation and research into the capabilities of moving or um, or um, offering an online proctored exam option, um, which we think offers a lot more flexibility um, for all of our, um, you know, examinees. Um, and so, you know, there was a lot of vetting with the testing um, provider um, to ensure kind of security was the same in terms of, you know, whether it was an in-person exam um, at a testing center or um, a remote proctoring exam. So there was lots of um, investigation, kind of beta testing to ensure that kind of um, security and level of um, quality was maintained for the examination. So, um, and, and 
through that, that it met all the ANSI requirements uh, as well for the examination. So we're very happy as a certification committee that um, we're able to offer this, especially um, and this is, was a, you know, a, a, I, I won't say it's a great time to roll it out, but it was a, it was a, a good time to roll it out in terms of being able to um, support individuals um, in our current climate um, um, to have the, um, the um, online option available. And Fernando is actually somebody who I think took a remote online proctored exam. So maybe he yes, would like to yes, say a few words. I'm, I'm one of the proud that, that took the remote, one of the first, I think, that took the remote online proctored exam. And I, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity because if you don't have a lot of test centers uh, in your country, or you live in a city far away from a test center, uh, I cannot speak for all region 12, but uh, here in Brazil, we only have one test center and not in all the country and, and it's located in Sao Paulo. Uh, and this, as you know, is a, Brazil is a huge country. So the, the remote proctor examination, it allows you to take your test in the comfort of your home and without the need to spend time and money with travel. Yes. And also I think one golden tip there I would like to share with you is non-native English speakers uh, is for you not to be afraid of asking for the 30 minutes extra time. Because for the, the CHD certification, yeah, for example, my certification, you need to answer 150 questions and you need all the time available to review the answers. It is a, it's a very long examination and you, need, you, will, you will use all the time that you need. Okay, I think next slide, please. Okay, so um, you uh, of course have concerns probably about how to prepare for your exam. Um, so um, the exam uh, detail content outline as uh, I touched on earlier um, is a great place to start. Um, you have, um, some of the job tasks um, that will be covered on the exam, um, they're featured there. So uh, of course you wanna start with your uh, candidate guidebook. Um, as Tim mentioned earlier too, um, we have our 30 question online practice exam. So um, you also want to take advantage of those. Um, those are excellent tools because the practice exams um, helped you uh, get familiar with um, exam content, the pace of the um, exam, um, how it's structured, level of difficulty. So um, we definitely encourage you to um, use those practice exams to uh, prepare for prepare. Um, also, we offer um, a number of publications through ASHRAE, um, particularly standards and guidelines. Um, you'll find like on our website and in the candidate guidebooks, um, there's suggested resources that you can use. Um, for your um, study. Uh, you're not obligated to purchase all of them, um, but you can choose some select ones that will address um, your needs um, as a student and as an examinee. Um, also, uh, as Tim mentioned, also we have our new uh, CHD study guide. So um, we, you, this is a great, another great way to prepare for this particular exam. Um, with ass assessments and um, other resources that are within it um, that can help you um, prepare. Um, this has a price of $56, but again, an excellent investment to help you get ready for this exam. And um, do we have any other comments on this, Tim? Uh, I would make one comment. The, st the, st the st study guide is a great tool for new hires. If you have young engineers, it's just a great tool for them to use to identify gaps and, and learn because it does have a task by task self assessment, um, a core and deep dive resource breakdown, 
Most of those are links to um, the ASHRAE handbooks. So if you have those in the office, this is a great tool for young engineers. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, so um, we know that all of you will be successful in acquiring your certification. Um, so um, as I mentioned before, um, your certification, once you've uh, obtained it, will last for three years. Um, so like if you became certified this year, um, you would, it would last till, until 2023. Um, at which time you would be ready to recertify. Um, so uh, here, when you recertify, you want to have acquired uh, PDHs or professional development hours, um, which uh, show that you um, have continued to um, keep your skills up, um, that you have demonstrated continued competency um, in your field. Um, a lot of the certifications, most of them require 45 PDHs. Um, when you reapply, um, when you apply for certification, um, of course, the BEAP and the BCXP um, require 50 PDHs. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, and uh, Kim, uh, I believe you may have had some comments on uh, recertification. Uh, yeah, I think Tim asked me to speak to it since I had to do my certification was up. <laughs> and so I just recertified yesterday. So thank you for this presentation to force me to do <laughs> to stop procrastinating. Um, so just kind of communicating in terms of what that process is as someone who holds a certification. It's, it's a very easy process in terms of recertification. Um, so it does not require a lot of, of um, time. Um, or energy for the recertification as long as, you know, and, and as long as you're doing your due diligence um, in terms of self-tracking your PDH hours, it is your self-reporting. So as long as you are personally tracking your PDHs over, um, over that three-year period, which if you hold other certifications or other um, licensing, you know, tracking your, your PDHs or continuing education um, credits is, is a pretty typical practice. So it's very easy um, to kind of validate and confirm that um, you're able to renew and, um, you know, you get multiple reminders by ASHRAE, you get asked to speak on panels and then that, that reminds you to do it as well. Um, so, you know, lots of, um, lots of reminders um, for um, renewing and um, it's all really available on the ASHRAE website as well, um, very easily accessible. So, um, uh, yeah, just paying attention to your specific certification requirements and making sure you comply with those, but um, a, a very um, painless and um, a pretty kind of typical requirements as one would expect for mo most certification. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Kim. I think the next slide, Kyron. And if I could take a minute, I'd like to just show everybody where to find certification on the ASHRAE website. So I don't know if I'm sharing my screen yet, am I? Kyron? Hey, not. Not as yet. Okay. Okay. How's that? Yep. Okay. So we're really easy to find if you go to professional development at the top and just move down to certification types. This lists all of our certification programs. We'll go to the CHD, learn more. And so it's here where you can, you can learn more about the digital badge, online proctoring. And then here you can find the candidate guidebook you can apply now. And there's a video here about digital credentials. Um, 
testing, some information here. You'll want, you'll want to go here to this page and uh, learn some more about how that works. Check your system compatibility. That's really important. What else? And then some tips on how to get ready for your examination. So that's that's the website. And all of the certification pages kind of look like, like this page here. Okay. And let's see. Okay, I'm, I think I'm back to you, Kyron. My screen's back up. It's good for me. Okay. All right. So, um, I can't see the slide, but basically, ASHRAE um, is really proud of its certificates, and we do a lot to promote them. We pu publish a list of certificates and in insights. Uh, there's a certification earner directory on the ASHRAE website. So if you go to that same professional development tab at the type and scroll down, you'll find that button. Um, and, and of course, everybody who earns a certification receives a digital badge, which is a great way to promote your certification. Um, next slide, please. Okay, can everybody see the slides? I'm not sure. You need I'm, to share your screen. Yeah, I'm no longer open. Oh, okay, there. got it. Sorry about that. Hey, guys. Okay, um, next slide. So, um, with the pandemic and everything else that's going on, we know that um, the application fee is a uh, is um, is one of the requirements for certification applications. So the certification committee and ASHRAE would like to offer a 20% discount on certification application through March 31st. So the, the discount code is region 12. And when you go in to complete your application, there's a discount code field and you just put that code in and it should apply a discount. Um, so that's that slide. Next slide, please. And if you need information, of course, you can call us, email us, uh, find us on the ASHRAE website. We'll be happy to help. And I think we're taking more questions now, too. So it seems in the chat we have questions. Uh, again, uh, John, we have, we, I think we're going to start with right, that, this one right here. Okay. Uh, uh, I, Luis Eduardo is asking about the HFDP certification. Uh, he's asking about the minimum score to achieve the certification. Sure. So we publish all of our examination passing scores. For the HFDP, I think it's around uh, 76 or so. I'm not sure, but all of the, if you find the FAQs page on each of the certification landing pages, you can find the FAQs link and you can find it there. Okay, uh, we have Stephen. Uh, he he wrote right here. All the questions in Spanish have been answered. So very efficient. Great. I think we don't have questions in English or Portuguese here. Only Spanish. Okay. Uh, is there any more question? So maybe I'll start by thanking everybody for attending. We're really excited to have you and excited about your interest in certification. So thank you. 
And I would like to thank all of the panelists. Uh, you guys did a great job. Um, Fernando, Kim, Susan, Esteban, Walter, John, Kyron for organizing. Um, I'm afraid I forgot somebody, I'm not sure. Um, Fernando, so thank you, everybody. Tim, oh, before, before we finish, we have one more right here. Okay. If one, if one signs up, how long can the exams be delayed? Okay, so once, you, once your application has been approved, you have 90 days to schedule and sit for your certification exam. So if you apply on March 31st with a discount, you would have to take your exam by April, May, June 30th. Okay, I think that's it. Yes. Oh, thank you all. Thanks, thanks everyone for attending. Thanks Tim and the panelists, Kim, Susan, John for helping me organize, Esteban for translating, Walter who is who had to run out, but thanks Walter as well. Uh, and thanks everyone for attending. Just remember in order to get the discount code, the discount code is region XII. Uh, emails will be going out over the next couple of days as well to for reminders to get region 12 certified. I think we have one more question from Johan. And uh, the question is, would you recommend beginning studying prior to applying? Um, I have my ideas about that. I think it depends on the individual, but I would ask Kim and Fernando to answer that question. Uh, I think I can start. Uh, I think you need to be studying before you apply, you know, just, I don't know which kind of certification you are uh, trying to achieve. For me, I, I work as an HVC designer, so it was easy to remember all the, the equations, all the, 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 the calculations, the skills that you need to uh, get a good score. And, but also I studied before I applied to to be just to be sure you know uh, i would i also would recommend studying before taking an exam but again that's um personally i'm i'm someone who would study <laughs> before an exam <laughs> especially if i'm investing um you know, in, in taking that exam, I want to make sure I'm just investing once uh, in it. Um, but I, I think if if you are working in the industry, you know, um, that that does go a, a long way with these exams. So it definitely helps and um, um, helps with the process. But yeah, my recommendation is, is to study. But again, that's me personally. <laughs> um, uh, guys, so, someone is asking about the um... The application fees again. Um, it's three ninety five for Ashray members. And, and now the, we have twenty percent. Yes. So the discount with the discount it comes down to three hundred and sixteen dollars, US. Yeah. So that's that discount goes until uh, March thirty first. Um. There was one other question, Fernando, um, from Luis Eduardo. Uh, I think he's just he just put it right here HFDP. I don't know if he's about the certification. So the application fee is the same for all certifications and the PDHs. So if you take a one hour webinar, you get one PDH. If you teach a two hour course, you earn four PDHs the first time you teach that course. So you can get different amounts of PDHs for different activities. Yeah, I believe if you publish, um, you know, if you say publish an article or something like that, that counts for a certain number of PDHs as well. So just look at your, um, and it's all spelled out on the ASHA website in terms of what what counts and the amount for PDHs. So I would just um, review that at, as well as what applies. And you can also uh, find this information in the candidate guidebook. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, for the HVC designer, you, you get some PD, PDHs for uh, design projects, you know. If you have uh, 
some des- uh, about some some you know your work about if you have some designs you can also apply those those projects to get some PDAs. That's right. All right. Any further questions? Um, you can type them in the chat box. Because I see Esteban is very busy chatting away. <laughs> I think we have a lot of, of uh, attendees from Spanish countries. Yeah. yeah. Kim, did you get your digital badge sorted out? I did. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, you guys got me uh, renewed and I have my digital badge on my LinkedIn account now, if anyone's looking for it. So I can, I can also say that that took about five minutes and I really shouldn't have procrastinated as long as I did to be longer (laughs) to find the email (laughs) than it actually did to get the digital badge. So don't procrastinate like me. (laughs) (laughs) Because you'd be called into a panel like we did. And then yeah. you have to do it. Yeah, and then and then Tim will be like, Kim, talk about your dish badge. I was like, I need to do that. <laughs> That's great. All right. If, if we have no further questions, I would like to thank the panelists as well as Esteban for assisting us. Uh, Tim, thanks, and Susan, thanks for joining us. Kim, as well. Fernando, thanks for sharing your expertise. For John, who's hosting us and assisting me. Uh, when my screen decided to be stuck. <laughs> and thanks everyone for attending. And uh, you guys would see emails coming out from myself and John over the next couple of days for reminders to use our Region 12 discount to get to the five. And Great. Thank awesome job. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. As well as for those of you who have missed the session, um, are recorded. It was recorded, so we will be sharing so that you can distribute with your members um, to benefit from this presentation as well. Perfect. Kyron, could you send me a link to the presentation too, please, to the recording? No problem. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. so Thanks, much. everyone, and have a Thank good day. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.